So this is the D-Day, dear Pan-African, as we were saying, uh, Professor Pielo Lumumba is live with us and connected and is ready to deliver this uh, speech, this momentous speech that all of us have been anticipating for the past week. Now he is here live with us and uh, we've been um, asking a lot of questions. What is it that um, former President Magufuli left uh, as a legacy? I mean, he, we know that Professor Pielo Lumumba, as we all saw or have been watching the whole week, had a conversation. And I think he is one of the most privileged to have had that last conversation, which we know officially uh, with pre late President Magufuli. So um, Africans are waiting and anticipating is it something that he knew that he was going to depart uh, so soon? Why was that sudden intervention when Professor PLO Lumumba was already on his way and he said, no, you have to come back to Tanzania. He stopped all his journey. He stopped everything that he was doing, boarded the flight and went back to Tanzania. So now Africans are saying there must have been something that um, make that opportunity or that created that opportunity for Professor Pielo Lumumba and uh, late uh, Dr. Magafuli. So it is that kind of a sensation like Africans are saying, he must have known that he was going to depart and he has given something like giving the battle over to Professor Pielo Lumumba. Youths are calling all over and said, we want to know that inner circle of discussion. Is there something that Prof has to tell us that we don't know? Now this is the time without even knowing that he was going to depart so soon. Professor Pielo Lumumba is here to deliver us that warm hearted speech. What is it that we all should know in moments like this? What should we be learning? So I want to welcome you, Prof to this uh, exclusive and thank you for taking time out here for us. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you very much, Dr. Tata. First, let me say that uh, we owe Dr. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli a moment of silence. Thank you. You know, I've uh, watched many footages. I've listened to many statements. And many things have been said about Dr. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli. Some of them a fiction con concocted by individuals whose agenda is to claim closeness to JPM. Mm -hmm. But I don't begrudge them at all. Some of them are epitome of adulation which is unadulterated as we have seen as the model remains of Dr. Magufuli is moved from one city from Dar es Salaam to Dodoma to Zanzibar to Mwanza in Tanzania. I've watched as many African countries fly their flags at half mast or half staff, including the UN, to celebrate this individual. And many claims will be made. There are few individuals who do not know that in the African tradition, when a person is sick, when he's dead, he cannot be your enemy. Yes. There are few individuals 
who refer to themselves as the opposition in Tanzania, who in death still, still spew venom. They do not know African tradition. In African tradition, when you are sick or dead, even your enemies become your friends. Absolutely. Because there is nobody to fight. Such as those must be forgiven and must be prayed for. Because they know not what they do. Because they are lackeys of foreign powers. They are sitting in the comfort of Belgium or Sweden or Paris or London or some Western capital and they are receiving stipends and their children are being catered for in foreign capitals in order to malign leaders of repute such as John Pombe Joseph Magufoli. I've had the advantage of having lengthy conversations with JPM. And I can tell my audience as a fact that there are few Africans in the opposition that he held who had an idea of how to liberate this continent from the yoke of neocolonialism. If there was ever a Tanzanian head of state in, who, in whom the spirit of Mwalimu Julius Kambarage Nyerere found residence, it was John Pombe Joseph Magufuli. Humility personified selflessness, selflessness personified Tanzanianess personified Africanness personified and consciousness that we are a people who deserve the best personified. Those who are writers of your were right. Those whom the gods love, they take soon. He is such a one as those. Conspiracy theorists are now populating the social media with conspiracy after conspiracy. I refuse to swim in the sea of conspiracy because it's populated with crocodiles and hippopotami whom I do not want to wrestle with. I choose to walk on the farm ground where John Pombe Joseph Magufuli sojourned when he lived on this earth. And the question that you and me must pose and answer at once, what are the lessons that we must learn from men such as him? Men whom, upon assuming high office, recognized that high office is an opportunity to serve selflessly, an opportunity to do that which is good because it is good to do God, to do good, an opportunity to serve fellow men because it is good to serve fellow men. What must we learn from them? You know, as a young student in 1979, 
I read a book, which even as I sit here I have, Oedipus Rex. It is a Greek tragedy depicting the life of a great Greek, Oedipus. And one of the greatest testaments that I learned from them is this statement. Behold, the sons and daughters of thieves. This was Oedipus, the greatest of all men. He held the key to the greatest mysteries. He was envied by all men. Behold, what a tide of misfortune swept over his head. Then learned that mortal man must always look to his ending. And none can be called happy until the day that he dies and carries his happiness to the grave in peace. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli is now with the Lord. And if I'm allowed a little sentimentalism, a little romanticization i want to believe that is on the right side of history the outpouring of emotion and adulation that we have seen in tanzania is with because he lived well and saw well. So you and me who are left behind, the question is, what will we do to memorialize him? You know, in times such as these, many people have prepared speeches written by speech writers, mm -hmm. where words are carefully chosen. But that is drama and acting. When the drama is over, how will we remember JPM? I remember that day. And for one hour, I sat with him. We reflected about the continent. Many people are now coming up and giving details of how they had moments with JPM. Some of it is fiction. Some of it is true. But whether fiction or true, we are celebrating the life of a great man. Because when great men are gathered to their fathers, we do not mourn, we celebrate. So we Africans who are gathered here today, ours is to celebrate a great man. John Joseph Pombe Magufuli. Mm -hmm. And how are we going to remember this great man? He is by giving prominence to the things that he stood for. To make Africa a great continent. So that we are able to recognize 
that we are not children of a lesser God. Mm. Many of you may not have walked the streets of Dar es Salaam, I have. Many of you have not walked the streets of Dodoma, I have. Many of you have not walked the streets of Arusha, I have. Many of you have not walked the streets of Mwanda, I have. Many of you have not walked the streets of Kigoma, I have. Many of you have not walked the streets of Mtuara, I have. In five years, you can see what one, a man can do through an administration when he or she makes the decision to serve his country. John Joseph Magufuli will be remembered by historians and foes and friends alike as a man who served his country in truth and dedication. Yes. Great men such as him are not to be mourned. They are to be celebrated. Hence the great statement, John Magufuli is dead, long live. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli. God bless him. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, it is it is not easy, particularly for someone like you who had that encounter. For us, it is already so deep. But when I see you as a voice, as a father, as a statesman, as a leader, and we see you win, crying in front of somebody that you had to meet, we also say our condolences to you, Prof. I know it is not easy, particularly being in this situation now. The questions that Africans are just scared and worried about is who is next? Whatever situation that we're going through, we want to thank you so much, even just for sharing that space with His Excellency. Just sharing that space and now telling us and giving the younger generation who he was. We want to thank you so much, Professor Pierre Olumumba. And we promise this generation that is watching you and following you and listening to you, that in case there were any mistakes that were made, that we were not paying attention even to the things that he was saying, even to the works, to his values, to his vision, we were not paying attention until he felt that we will not make that mistake again. We will pay close attention to every directives that you and the leadership mm -hmm. is going to put on. We thank you so much, Prof, for taking out that courage, coming here to share that moment with us. But Prof, can you just tell us what Africans, mm -hmm. um, we, we, it's like we wait one falls and then we gather. We wait, one falls, and then we start realizing. And the magnification week, like you said, Prof, we don't want to be that waiting until something would fall. And then we start sharing your images and your speeches and people claiming exactly what you're saying, that they were friends of you. Papa, mm. our father, we just want to beg you, just tell us what Africans should do. Now we have our excellency, Samir. And we have others like you, whom Africans are just afraid now. We don't know. We don't know how. We don't know what to do. Take up that courage, yeah. Papa, and just tell us what we should know and what we should be doing. My, you know, one year ago, I met a somebody who has now become my friend, Dr. Nevers Mumba, who is now who was the former vice president of Zambia, now a presidential candidate in the forthcoming election. He recognized me at the airport in Bole, in Addis Ababa, and came up to me. He's slightly older than me, but he said, I've listened to you, and you say the right thing. 
And on that day, another man whom I cannot remember came to me and said, young man, Africa is in the business of lionizing and rhapsodizing her sons and daughters when they are long gone, when not when they are alive. True. Africa must learn to recognize our sons and daughters when they are alive and well. My message to fellow Africans is that there is a ghost or there are ghosts that reside in our hearts. The ghosts of envy, the ghosts of negativity. Let us exorcise those ghosts. Let us recognize that when one of our own is doing a good thing, it is our duty to recognize them and to celebrate them. Because when we celebrate them, we energize them. And when we energize them, they are energized. And when they are energized, they energize their villages. When their villages are energized, their towns are energized. And when their towns are energized, their cities are energized. And when their cities are energized, their countries are energized. And when their countries are energized, then the African continent is energized. It is that positive energy that we need at all times for the sake of this generation and generations yet to be born. Today, I only ask you one question. You who are listening to me, in your heart of hearts, what resides there? Is it negativity or positivity? If it is negativity, exercise that ghost. Because when you are positive, then you lend justice, not only to yourself, but to the society. So choose you now whom you shall serve, the God of negativity or the God of positivity. As for me, I choose the God of positivity. Yes. Be blessed. Be blessed, Professor. The wise words that you're dishing out here and the wisdom, it can be heard maybe when we are celebrating and maybe when he was alive. But I think any African, any of us that will not hear these words today and unite, be it in our homes, be it in our communities, then there is definitely some other ghosts that are residing in us. We want to thank you and celebrate you also, Prof. We don't want to share your images and talk about stories. We don't want to cry crocodile tears. We don't want people to flood the streets like they do. They should do it in a later time when all of us have invested to listen and to follow our elders, our leaders, our statement like you. Prof, we thank you so much. I know you're broken. I know all of us are broken, but we have only you, Prof, only you. And one thing that we know about these conspiracy theories, and we're keeping it abreast with ourselves to say, we don't have time for all those theories. All we need is just us now. Are we correct, Prof? Indeed. You know, Amilka Cabral of guinea in 1964 said, as long as we move as a disunited force in Africa, and as long as the best of us shine like pink puddles, we'll always be taken out one by one. Our safety lies in our collaboration so that our enemies may know that we are so many that it matters not whom you take, they will always be a successor. And I hope and pray that the movement 
and the initiative that you, Dr. Tata, is taking through mobilization through the media is going to be one of the ways in which we energize 1.4 billion of us that when our enemies come to attack us, it will not matter. As Mahatma Gandhi of India once said, you can kill my body, but you'll never take my spirit unless mm. I give it to you. Yes. Yes. How long, how long are we going to watch and how long are we going to sit and cry and mourn and see you all? Um, Not long. We Martin yes. Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. Tata said, how long? Not long. If you remember that famous speech of Martin Luther King Jr. said, how long? Not long. Because the reality of the moment is that it cannot be too long. Because the stars are now aligned in our favor. Our duty is to recognize that they are so aligned. Worry not. God is on our side. And when God is on your side, who can dare to be against you? Hmm. Who can dare? Who can dare? Who can dare? Son of Africa, Professor Pielo Lumumba, a statesman and a father, you're all watching and we are listening and we're crying, we're mourning with him. It is so painful to see a father, a strong man broke down for the loss of a friend, the loss of a statesman. It is so heartbroken and we're all here. All of them that have been passing here this week, we've had to break down for one reason or the other. And everybody was just saying, we're waiting for Professor Pierre Lima. Now we see how it is hard. Prof, you saw the you said you've seen all the fly-ins and we've seen tanzanians mourn and tear the, themselves apart and we all know like testimonials of his work not only but the fact that we know he was a president for the poor 90 percent of this so-called or be labeled as poor people were the people that he laid down his life for. And now we saw 12 head of state at these ceremonies. Most of them dished out very touching speeches and they, they made us also cry. Now, the question is, are we convinced? Not even are we convinced. Is it time that we also think that these leaders could change, that, that, that we also could gather the force and support them and say we talk too much about the bad leadership they could be learning something by the fall of one person you know i've listened to all the tributes that have been made i'll not i'll discount that of uh mama samia Siluhu. Hassan, because she's believed. The most powerful tribute ever made to an African leader is that of the president of Malawi, President yes. Takwera. Yes. That is the most powerful, in my view, the most touching ever made. It is a funeral oration which history must record as one of the greatest funeral orations of all time. Yes. I have myself requested on that basis to secure a meeting with President Chakwera. And my intention, if he accepts my request, is for him to be in the forefront of the leadership of a new Africa. Correct. I hope he'll accept. Perfect. My request. Because Africa needs something new, something different. I'm not discounting other great African leaders who did not attend, people whom I think are great, 
but Chakwera touched something that nobody touched. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was perfunctory and I'm being unfair to them or had prepared speeches. Chakwera spoke from his heart. Correct. Whether you like Chakwera or not, go and listen to him again, read him again. He captured the essence of the Magufuli that I met, the Magufuli that I know, the Magufuli who loved Africa, the Magufuli who thought that within the inner recesses of the African mind and the African heart, there is gold and silver, which only is waiting to be unleashed. When you listen to Chakwere he said, and he says it in so many words, when they said that an Africa could not do this, they did not know that there was a Magufuli out there. And that is why, when I said in 2014 that the Africa need to be Magulified, I've yes. been vindicated. Let's leave it at that. Wisdom demands that sometimes we leave it at that. And perhaps this is the time to leave it at that. God bless you. God bless you, Prof. God bless you and your family and the entire continent. Um, exactly this point, uh, we on, on Sunday, we want to analyze the speech of the president of Malawi. We, we've been watching those speeches here, but we want to take that as a case study. But now that you're even saying, which makes it even so much glorifying, that you are going to meet with him again. I mean, I've, we will I've run. Requested, I've requested to meet him in writing. He has not received my letter yet. I believe he'll receive it in the course of next week. Lest he think that I'm lying. I've sent the letter to him through the embassy of uh, Malawi in Kenya and through a mutual friend, and I hope that he'll receive and acknowledge. Absolutely correct. We on the Pan-African Daily TV are testimonials of the fact that you have said it and we have said it and we're also going to follow up on that. And we rally all our support behind you. We have recorded that you sent it, Prof. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> You are a different kettle of fish yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm grateful, Pro, that we can, I, I, I was able to transform and just put that smile that we all miss from you today, despite the tears that you're holding back from us. You are our father. When you tell us we're going to go, we know that your meeting with the president of Malawi is going to bring back everything that we expect. Africans are sending you also in the name of our ancestors and we're behind you. Prof, I know it's laid out there and I can see you comfortably. What is it that you just want to leave with us again before you go? I know this is not your mood today and I'm not going to really push it. It was a pleasure to have you. Tell My, us one last the only thing, thing that I can say in memory of President John Pombe Joseph Magufuli is that those who seek never fail to find. Our duty is to seek that which we seek. And let me tell you, if we seek it in sincerity and with dedication, we'll find it. And let us remind ourselves that is, this is an intergenerational struggle. One generation to the other. From mother to daughter, from father to son, and ultimately, we shall find it. God is on our side. Who is it that can be against us? And if they are, they'll be all struck down. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Prof. Thank you for being here. Greetings out there to your family. And we love you. We love you. And we love you till even after life. Bye-bye. Bye. So, 
It was a wonderful pleasure to have Professor Pierre Olumumba with us, ladies and gentlemen.